right, for this first Hobby Lobby hack, I wanted to recreate this golden bamboo mirror. So I got this bamboo stick. I did get a whole pack of these at Lowe's for like three bucks, four bucks. I got like 25 sticks or something. It was definitely worth it at Lowe's. Lowe's. Got this from Dollar Tree. It's just a basket. We are going to be using the chain off of it. So go ahead and remove that from the basket and keep the basket for another project, okay? And I picked up one of these mirrors. It can just be any square, rectangular mirror, or it can be round if you please. I mean, I would go with the squarish one because of what we're doing, okay? We're just going to pop out the mirror, and you can keep the frame or discard it. We're going to measure out exactly, you know, our length of the bamboo, and I just ended up kind of scoring it with the scissors, and then I just simply broke it in half. It was a little tough because it is bamboo. Bamboo is very hard wood, but I have faith in you. Both sides the same, you know. I did go about an inch or so over each edge, so you want to go about two inches more than what you measured out. So you have an inch overhang, if that makes sense. Basically just spray painted the chain and the bamboo gold. Then I hot glued it onto the mirror as shown. It's pretty simple. For this next Hobby Lobby hack, we're going to recreate this basket. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to be using this bag of beads first. We're going to go ahead and open these, and then we're going to take a wooden skewer of your choice. I actually got this from Dollar Tree a long time ago. I cannot find the wooden skewers at any Dollar Tree in my town. I have about seven or eight Dollar Trees, and I've just been to them all, and for some reason cannot find these. So you might want to, if you can't find them either, you can order them on their website. But I'm going to dump these out and then just use this basically to just see what I'm doing here to get the bead on onto the stick. And then we'll push it down just like that. So what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and put all the beads on as much as we can and have just a little bit of a space like that. We'll be getting closer together about like this. Give or take, you know what I mean. And then we're going to spray paint the whole thing like white. That way we can get a fresh, clean canvas. And then I'm going to go through and paint them with a tan color to get them to look like they're raw wood again. And if you guys have an easier way of just basically stripping off the color to go back to natural, go ahead and leave that in the comments below for other people. But this is going to be the easiest way that I keep seeing on YouTube. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so once you got your stick fully loaded, then we can go ahead and spray paint it. Now, this is going to be about your easiest way to spray paint all these at once. Now, they're poked through the cardboard box, so I'm actually able to twist the entire thing after I spray one side. Alright, so I hope this helps.
Okay, as you can see here, the beads did not fully saturate with the white spray paint. You can still definitely see the color. And I, like I said before in the video, you want to leave a gap because look at this. They're like stuck together. And a lot of the spray paint just like settled to the bottom of bead. So I'm going to like separate these apart and then we are actually going to go back over this with acrylic paint. I'm going to mix some white with a little bit of this bronze yellow and some of this chalkboard paint in gray. So I'm going to just come up with my own mixture and paint these so they look like a nice neutral natural color. So here is the color I came up with by mixing the three and I'm just going to go and kind of well first I think I'll go back and forth like this saturate and coat these beads and then I'm going to go back through and just kind of like dab like this just to like make sure I get every little piece and to not like clump up the paint all over the bead should pick up the paint distribute it more evenly throughout all the beads. The next thing that you're going to need is this plant hanger thing. I took off the chain and I used that for a different project already. And I used the clips for a different project. So now I'm just left with this piece, which I figured, okay, we're going to make, we're basically going to use this and we're going to use, we're going to use a mop head. I took, already took it off and opened it. Um, there's some of the pieces and then we'll just take these out just by taking that just like this. So I'm first going to start with wrapping this around right here and we'll just tie it off with a simple knot just like that and you can leave this little excess piece because we're going to end up wrapping around the top here but we'll just take it wrap it around once push it up and just keep going all the way around and you're obviously gonna like run out right here so you'll just take another piece and you can tie it together like this And this will get hidden in there as we keep going around because we're gonna make this nice and full all the way down but this is gonna be hidden when we go to the next okay so this is what it's looking like so far I decided to pull the wherever I do end up tying the pieces together just pull them on the outside to kind of give this little like fringe or like bow moment where it's tied in random spots on the outside. So that'll give like this really fun texture. Okay, I'm going to take one of my little crafter clamps to clamp this in place for right this minute because I do want to fill this little like circle in. So how I'm going to do that is just take one piece of the mop, string, whatever you want to call this thing, cotton twine. I'm going to tie, tie it around the loop right here. I just did a double knot. And I want to make sure this is on this side here, this little piece. And all I'm going to do is go back and forth with, you know, this. Just kind of sporadically like this. Okay, there we go. And just overlap. So I'm just going back and forth across like this. All the way to the other end. 
And this is about how as good as it's going to get with me just basically wrapping a bunch of it around and then tying it off. At least it's filled in. That's all that really I care about at this point. Now for the top ring here, I just tied a piece around this little loop and I'm taking it and just basically looping it all the way around the top of the basket like this. That's going to hide this little piece, which is actually over here. Like, see that hanging out? So that'll be like pushed down and wrapped over. This will give a nice, like, clean, finished look. Okay, so this should be what your basket looks like after you finish out the rim. And then you'll have these little black things that are poking out. You do want that. Here's the middle filled in. And then my little fringe pieces are all randomly all over the outside. So now we are going to move on and attach our beads onto this. We're going to take some twine, put a needle on the end of it. We're going to take our little beads here. So all I'm doing is just taking some twine and I'm looping it around. I just picked a random bead and tied that tight on there. Then I took that twine and I put it through the like little hoop that's sticking up on the edge of the basket and tied it very tight to that little teeny hoop. That's basically where the chain was prior. So I just made sure that the beads kind of hung evenly, so I just kind of like eyeballed it. So after I was done tying all three sides, I decided I wanted to add some fringe pieces that hung kind of off that same area where the beads are tied to. So I ended up taking, taking some uh, twine and just making several, uh, I guess three, big fringe pieces that looked really nice up against the basket. So you could leave it like this, or you could go ahead and make fringe pieces out of twine and add those where the beads meet up in the small black ring where we added the beads. So I ended up making another one of these with twine and I added fringe on the rim and I hung this upside down as a lampshade. So I briefly showed this project in another video, but I wanted to kind of go over it a little more in detail. It is pretty easy. I just got this woven rug from Dollar Tree. I folded it in half like hot dog style and I literally used hot glue to glue the ends together. That's all I did. So simple. Once I was done hot gluing one or the side together and then one end closed. So one of the ends of the tassels. So I glued two sides together technically because you know the other side is already put together I didn't turn it inside out or anything all I did was stuff it with polyfill slash an old pillow I had started using the filling out of it so I just took all this and I mixed both of them together so it didn't have any weird lumps or anything like that if you have an old teddy bear or something maybe you want to use that or an old pillow to just take it apart and fill this up I would totally do that that's what I did and yeah I end up saving a lot of money actually only spent a dollar on the woven rug thing from Dollar Tree and I already had all the material so we just used the glue stuffed it and then I had a brand new like boho styled pillow I figured I'd throw this in this tutorial or this uh, Hobby Lobby video just because you can find something like this at Hobby Lobby, and this could cost you, you know, 12 bucks for a new 
pillow, which is a little ridiculous. So let's make it for a dollar. And I love the way this turned out. I love the tassels on the ends. Doubling up on them just like really gives a fullness effect to it. I end up styling this on my bed. For this next Hobby Lobby hack, we're going to be making this basket. It did retail for $24.99. So I grabbed this Dollar Tree basket and I ended up cutting off some of the uh, pieces because I just didn't want that many, I guess, in my overall design. So the ones I'm cutting is every other spacing. So I saved these pieces for a different project. This is what it should look like. Now they're more square, I guess. All right, now we're moving on and we are gonna be using paper and just rolling out paper tubes. And if you've never done that, like in elementary school, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it. So we're cutting out paper like in strips, about two and a half inches by, you know, eight, 11 inches, whatever this is, long wise, you know what I'm saying. Uh, right after you got a bunch of strips, you can go ahead and pour in some Elmer's glue into a bowl. And I went ahead and used a paintbrush for this project. It's a lot easier. And we're just painting some glue on. And then I actually have a piece of a Dollar Tree broom. That's what I'm using to roll my tubes. But you can use a pencil that's like round, not like the number two pencils that are like hexagon um, you want something round like maybe like a straw just something like that but the this bigger piece I used a bigger one to create bigger tubes like thicker tubes those are gonna be used later on in this project and I'm gonna go ahead and use a straw and show you guys in real time this should take about 30 seconds to roll a paper tube so you'll just tuck in that end and then once you start rolling it's gonna roll in on itself over that glue we just put down. And then you'll stop towards the end and put glue in the corner and just roll it. And it should slide right off whatever you're, you are using. You could also use the skewers from Dollar Tree. You could use whatever you have laying around. So after we're done rolling, we're actually gonna flatten out the rolled tube, just like this. Give it like a good bend, that way we have flexible tube to use. Now I just brewed up some coffee and I'm actually going to be staining the paper and this is prior to making the tubes but you can like again you can always put the tubes in here it won't fall apart or anything like if you're afraid that it will it won't just dip it in there and then you'll have some dyed paper tubes. You can also paint the tubes if you want. So now we're going to start gluing the tubes to the basket. We're going to wrap these tubes around each uh, piece of the basket. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I'm doing now. I started by gluing one of the tubes to the top of the basket in the inside. And I did it at a slight angle. That way I was able to twist this flattened paper tube around the like piece of the basket if that makes sense so you can see like let me get it in a little closer just so you can see so basically just wrapping the tube around just like that that's pretty simple right once we are done like we get to the end of this tube I'm just gonna use a little bit more hot glue and just tack this down Go ahead and continue wrapping more paper tubes until you get to the bottom and we're just going to continue doing this around the whole thing. We are completed with the vertical sections. Now I'm actually going to go back through 
and start doing the horizontal sections. Now with this one, you're actually gonna wanna make sure you start again from the inside of the basket just so that your little pieces are kind of hidden throughout the design. You don't really want the this outside or this piece on the outside because then you'll be able to see that you hot glued well paper to a basket. <laughs> so we're just basically mimicking like a woven basket, but we're just using flattened paper, if that even makes sense. Right, now that we are finished with the horizontal sections, we are going to go ahead and start weaving in between these sections just to really give it that basket look feel that we saw from the Hobby Lobby one. So as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just literally weaving every other. So this section I'm going to do it just how I did in the top section. So I would be like over, under, over and then I'll go under over. Do you see what I'm saying? Alright, now I'm going to show you guys how to finish off the basket. So we're going to work on the bottom piece first. And this is where we are going to use our thicker um, tubes that are flattened out. And we're just going to basically use half of that tube. We're going to like cut it in half and then glue one half of it to the bottom of the basket and then tuck in the other half up under that ledge and then it will be in the inside of the basket and that is where we're gonna hot glue the other side. Now I wanted to create something that would look nice in the inside of the basket in case it was ever empty. So I cut out a um, circular circle shape from cardboard, like an old pizza box would work. Just glue it down there. Then I'm using some leftover flattened, you know, paper tubes and I'm just hot gluing those around just to hide all those little pieces. Make it look a lot nicer. So as you can see in here, I literally just have to take some more of these paper tubes and paint them and wrap them around, secure them with hot glue. That will finish off this border, like the top here. And then in the inside here, I'm just gonna put some paper down just to make this look nice and yeah. So I found this is like contact paper. So it, it's adhesive covering for your like cabinets, like to line them. Really liked it, that was so pretty, like this floral pattern. So I think I'm gonna use this. I'll cut it up into a circle and place that down in the inside here. All right, so I went ahead and cut out the circle and just placed it over the cardboard. This contact paper is really easy to remove, so this was super easy to put in. I didn't get it precise. So I went ahead and finished the top off camera, and this is our finished basket.
So I came across this really cute table, but I did not want to pay $40. I thought that was a little ridiculous. So let's go ahead and just make our own unique table using a mixture of Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree's items. After I spray painted the paper towel holders and we had bent them into the shape I want, spray painting them black, and now I'm going to go ahead and use hot glue and E6000 to secure them down. We're gonna use tape and let that sit overnight and then let it dry and we'll be done. Now this part is optional, but I bought these from the Dollar Tree a while back. They're little felt pads with a sticky side. That way this part doesn't scratch the floor or anything like that. When I do put it somewhere, uh, I'm just gonna cut the small ones in half and just place them right here on the edge. That way, like, that will kind of protect the paint because I feel like this will scratch off on the floor or something like that. So I'm going to put those on. So I ended up actually just cutting uh, the sides off of one of the circles. So I still have, like, these pieces I can use for a different project. So that way they would fit onto the little bar thing here just because they were a bit wide. So I put two there that way. Well, you know what I mean. It seems to be holding just fine. 